All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're having a wonderful evening. Ladies We're and doing gentlemen, a little bit different once again here tonight with a live watch list. So if you're used to the normal watch list, it's not going to be that much different. I got the keys. I got the plays. We're going to talk a little bit about what happened today because the market definitely calmed down took a breather and everybody is looking forward to everything that we got next week. So I have that breakdown for you. It's the same old watch list. The only difference is I may get interrupted from here and there as I say hello to the chat and say good evening because we have everybody here live right now and ready to go. So before I get into any of that, before we say good evening, before we get into any Q&A, and that's what we're going to have time for. It's been a lot of fun here. So we're going to have a blast here tonight. Before any of that, I need to remind you, we are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open, youtube.com slash the stock market. Do you see it? I don't know if I can like zoom in. It says like, like right there, like the stock, it's like just the stock market. We are live. There is data tomorrow. We'll be here. I think there's still a lot of things we got to digest, but even then coming in the next week, you are definitely going to want to be there. So hope you're ready for all of it. Instead of any intro music, we'll get into the car. It's the toddy toddy let. Oh no, baby. I get to say good evening. What's going on, Chad Adonia? How you living? What up, El Trapado? What up, Flav? Candy? Tyler? Most dope, baby. Alaskan Assassin? Tim Whitman, baby. Caballero? Good evening, baby. Matthew Orman? John Daniel, baby. Brian Fierros, baby. Oh, devil. Oh, now the chat waking up. Now it's going brah, brah, brah. Tom Smith, baby. Pablo? Daniel? Dan, baby. Michael Pila? Nickelbag, baby. Good evening. Oh, what up, Brenda? How you living? What up, Dars? Paolo, ram the ball. Oh, my goodness. Hey, Seuss is ready to go. Zuraj in the house, baby. Good evening. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, this is live. Yeah, you are tuned in for our live watch list. What up, Edwin? What up, Austin? What up, Miz, baby? Yeah, we are live. We are not on the Twitch. No, we do have the Twitch as a backup if you guys are ever curious. Twitch TV slash Trading Fraternity. But, nah, this is just for YouTube and the watch list. I don't post the watch list on Twitch. So, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, I, I do want to I do want to say good morning. I'm very tempted to say good morning as well. So, Chatadonia, I hope you guys are ready. I mean, I think today was fairly simple there is a couple of a uh, head scratchers but not anything too wild so get out those notepads uh we're gonna have time for questions and then we'll have a good night here so are you guys ready are you guys ready to go you got your notepads you locked in did you like the video when you have your notepads just like the video tell me that you're ready to go we got a lot to talk about baby we got a lot to talk about it's super simple though so we got the likes i don't know are you yeah you hitting it up what up daniel hello Alu, alu, how are you? Good, good. All right, they got them. I'm seeing some notepads. I'm seeing some likes on the video. Beautiful, baby. Beautiful. So here's the deal. As far as what happened today, I don't know if you guys noticed, I have a multi-day chart. I mean, as of now, I guess one of the big questions tomorrow, do we end the week by setting another high? Remember, that has kind of been the theme. We hit a new high on Friday before selling off. And this week, this morning, pre-market, you were actually a little bit higher than where we were Friday. But then that data hit and then we went down. And that was a big thing with what we got here today is that we actually responded to the data. There was hotter PPI. The retail sales were bad. The dollar went up. Bitcoin went down by like five or six. Gold even went down. Oil broke up above $81. And all of these were just it kind of actually finally hit today. You know, every single day, even the last two days. Remember, this was a hot CPI. We went up. We digested it a little bit yesterday. Didn't move much. And now today, you finally got a reaction there with the PPI. So all in all, you do got to see it. It is this awkward. Yeah, you're coming down a little bit. But overall, we are still elevated and we are still getting ready, upholding most of the narratives, getting ready and preparing for Powell next week. So that's what we dealt with today. There was a little bit out of Japan and China, but like I'm saying, the interesting part was how the dollar moved today. It was very strong, and no matter what happened with the yen or whatnot, 
it just the dollar clapped everything. And again, a majority of names today, I want to say like 95% of the market was actually trading lower on the day. So that was the wild part. That was the bad part as far as the first key. I don't know if I gave anything away, but if you don't know what happened today and if you don't know the kind of vibe, every time we're up at these highs kind of going lower and cooling off a little bit, it is everybody punting towards the next event. This has been a theme for a while, and even this morning, everybody was talking about all of the events that we have next week. Not only do we have Jerome Powell, there's going to be more data. You're going to have a NVIDIA event with the chips, and then I think there's one more thing. Oh, it's on a global scale. I'm blanking on that, but we still have a lot more unraveling, and that's a big thing, and it seems like today, even with tomorrow, I think everybody, we're not going to get too crazy of a move. We do have a big option expiration, and we're going to talk about that, but all in all, I do think everybody's already moved on, preparing for the events next week, and they're going to use that to start putting risk on or taking risk off, so Keep that in mind. We are still cooled off, but still elevated with a lot more events coming up here. But now, like I'm saying, this was the part I gave away, the dollar. This was a very big deal. Remember the last couple of days here? It was like the first five or six days in a row of the dollar going down. The first down streak in a very long time, and a lot of things benefit off of it. Gold went crazy. Bitcoin, everything was doing good. We liked that dollar coming down a little bit. Well, after one day today, like I'm saying, the yen or anything, it skyrocketed up tomorrow. This, I think, is going to be important tomorrow because how are we going to wrap up this week and like what is going to be the foot that we are on coming into Powell. Where is that dollar going to be at? How is it going to affect things like gold, even the bonds? This is something we got to watch tomorrow. And then the expiration, there's a lot of money on the table for tomorrow. A lot of plays. We're going to get this one out the way and then this will be your big expiration and then it's just Powell next week. So these are going to be the things we're looking out for tomorrow. There will be data. The Michigan consumer sentiment, that could move the market. But the way I'm looking at it for tomorrow, either the market is going to respond to the data like it responded to the PPI. If it comes in hot, then it's not going to like it. Otherwise, it'll be in its own world as it responds to the dollar and the options expiration. So all that being said, <clears throat> excuse me, I was fighting from giving you guys one thing. I wanted to say it here because again, just how the market's moving and all these crazy events and all these different things we're dealing with, man. I can't I can't stress it enough, and I don't know if you guys have noticed it, man. The market is moving in these weird ways, and it seems very wild, but it is moving exactly what is priced in on the option chain. So I don't know if you guys were paying attention. We were calling it out most of the day. Even at the very low, the S&P was down by 0.63. We went over the option chain yesterday. It was pricing in a 0.6 for the PPI. We closed at 0.29. So you actually ended up closing less than what was being priced in. But why I'm bringing this up and I'm saying tie this into everything else in the dollar and the expiration tomorrow. See what's priced in. I don't. I think tomorrow, believe it or not, we are pricing in about 0.6 for tomorrow as well too. So that's the weird part about it is that, like I'm saying, maybe dollar expiration will be the main themes. Maybe we'll react to the data, but in a weird way, you're kind of pricing as in as much as you are today. So maybe we get a move like today, tomorrow. Maybe it's even bigger than Friday, but all in all, keep this in mind. And like I said, watch the market pricing ultimately until this stuff fails. But if you don't know the main theme of the of what this week was, it was a week near the highs. We didn't hit a new high just yet. It's like we're cooling off, but now we're starting to get ready for the big events next week. Still holding up everything that we've already gained thus far and now just getting ready for the home stretch and market is feeling comfortable and they're not feeling a necessary need to move anytime soon or at least until they hear from Mr. Jerome Powell. So Chad Adonia, I hope you're ready for all of it. I hope you're locked in, but now let us get into the play. So right off the bat, before I get into any place, don't let me get ahead of myself. You're here live, baby. See, these are those interjections I was talking about, non-live people. But I love you. Like the video if you're not live. And if you are live, you could like the video. Oh, 40 months gang, baby. Say what's up, Malik. Hey, man, even on the main channel, come on. God bless you, bro. 
So, Chad. Tell me. Tell me, tell me. Tell me why. Ain't nothing but a ray hike. Tell me why he ain't nothing but a ray cut. Tell me why he, I never wanna hear you say, I'll leave the rates that way. Tell me why he ain't nothing but a ray hike. All right, anyway. I'm going to say, tell me, do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? If you do, now is the time. Any questions about what we had today? Anything that happened this week? Again, there's a couple of things overseas. Oh, Bank of Japan next week. That's the other event that I forgot. Mm -hmm. Is there anything? Is there anything? You let me know. Any questions? The Altria news, we'll get into that when we get into the plays, but big news. It's been awesome. Hopefully, you got that long-term pickup. Inflation, well, this week, and even that's what happened today, and this is what I've been saying, the elephant in the room is that inflation is going up. So all gauges that are that are worried about inflation are moving up. People, the data, that's the weird part is that the markets are staying so strong and sound and resilient and near these highs, but all the inflation gauges are going back up and people's worries are climbing. That's even why we have fully priced out any exuberant rate hikes beyond what the dot plot is showing. And that's why even then the dot plot net we next week is going to be so important. But that is the, uh, the, that's the cherry on top for today. It was another set of hot inflation data but then this time we actually went down, but you know, you're, you're still not like fully down. You know, you were even down uh, a lot more just a couple of days ago. Do you think the fed can cut? And I don't think so without maybe causing it a little bit more, nor do I think they, they have a need to, I don't think, I think cutting too soon would kind of be a mistake just as well. You know, just don't forget. I mean, this is the same, this is the same cycle where homeboy, was raising rates by three three rate cuts in one. You guys don't remember that? Powell was raising rates 75 basis points in one meeting. You know, and that's the cycle we're on now. So I don't want to, I, I don't think they'd want all that to go to waste there, but it doesn't seem like the data, I do think the data is extremely lagged, but it doesn't seem like it's pointing to the, to a time where it's like, yeah, rate, rate, rate cuts are, are, are good in that sense. I don't think we need it. That's not like, a, again, I don't think rate cuts are, Good or bad, just more so kind of unnecessary. But any other questions? Any any other questions about what happened today and what we're going through tomorrow? Again, you got consumer sentiment. We went through all the keys there. Again, the market pricing. Pay attention to that. All right. We good. Uncle's still in the lab. Amen. 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 Well, on that note, as far as the plays, baby. Let's get into it. Oh, your first time. Well, get ready, man. We're going to have some time to talk a little bit, baby. But play number one, I made this play yesterday, and I even grabbed a little bit more today. Uh, ZB, I got clapped on. I was down like 1,500 on it today from the play from yesterday. Average down. This is a future on the 30-year bond, and pretty much I'm looking for a relief bounce on bonds for Friday. Simply put, the bonds have died almost every single day. They've given up all the, the, the rally from the last time they rallied off of these levels. I was playing it around here and got back into it. So going to be looking to make a flip. They may be sensitive coming into Powell, so think this will be a little bit risky, but I am going to try to be making a play on this tomorrow. Hopefully try to get out, but I would definitely watch out for bonds in the short term just after they've been clapped. But otherwise, too, keep note of where long-term bond yields are, both on the 20-year, 30-year, even the 10-year. It's climbing back above 4.25 again, and that'll even tell you a little bit about kind of how people are feeling. Soft landing, no landing, hard landing, all of that good stuff. So that's going to be the first thing I'll be watching. Play number one, ZB. Play number two, Alibaba. Prince Ali, 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 Ali Adala. Strong as 10, regular yen, equal as he. So Alibaba, uh, this one, uh, this one's a play combined with the Futu. So we made that earnings play yesterday on Futu, and that one went up 300%. And I was talking about it. I said, you know, not only was the play cheap for two standard deviations on Futu, but the China stocks were rallying. If you're not aware, 
China's stocks have rallied. This is the first time in like a year and a half, almost two years, where they've maintained a rally longer than three weeks. So it's a very good China rally. A lot of those names went up, and I figured, hey, I'll grab that put on Futu. That one ended up hitting, and then all these China names went down. I was liking Baba, and I was liking it yesterday. So I said, hey, let me get a play. I decided to go with the uh, next week March 80 calls for 20 cents. Even the stock went down a little bit. Those contracts held up. So I grabbed two of those 80 calls for next week for 20 cents. Uh, plan on flipping one, making them free. But I like Baba to the upside. Maybe today was a breather, and then they'll be able to resume again. I think everything was a breather, or at the very least, by Powell next week, they should start making some moves. So watch out for that. That is play number two. And then finally... Play number three, baby. Play number three. This one, I like it, man, and it's uh, it's been messing with me. Oil, I'm sure it's it's actually messed with a lot of people. Uh, but this is either gonna break out tomorrow or just gonna chill on the week. Very simple. It got above the 80 today, went to like 81 dollars and some change. It's been flirting with 80, then selling off to the low 70s. It's finally doing it. It hasn't been this high in a while, so I think Friday is gonna be very interesting how it ends up settling. So we'll watch out again. There is even a big expiration, a lot of rollovers. I don't think oil contracts have to be royal till uh, rolled over till next week. So we'll see. But all in all, this is that breakout level. I'm in it. I'm still in those CLs. I'm actually up on my micro crude. So we'll find out how that all plays out from here. But either way, I think tomorrow is going to be a lot of positioning and punting into next week. We'll get a little bit more momentum. And then that's all she wrote and then we go from there by Chatadonia. that's all I have for plays as far as everything else I don't think I made any other plays uh, I made a Adobe I lost like ten dollars on a pre Adobe flip I made the Baba play and then I think that's about it I did Adobe after hours I'm down 700 on those shares I think they'll be good still in the gold short I'm in the ZB I'm making some money on that now I rolled over the MNQ I'm down a thousand bucks on that that was from last Friday, and I think that's about it. I think that's about it, ladies and gentlemen, and nothing too crazy. I'm vibing. And then MO, baby, that was a great long-term pickup. If you didn't see what happened with MO, how many of you remember me talking about this news? So what they announced was that they sold off a portion of their stake in AB InBev. But I don't know how many of you have heard me talk about this over the last like three or four years. I have brought this up so many times. I just never knew when they were going to do it. And then they finally did it. Uh, so it's very big news. This was something that a lot of people, analysts were looking for for a super long time. And they finally ended up going through with it. They sold off, I believe, uh, I think it was like 18% or something of their stake. They still own 8% of Anheuser-Busch, Budweiser, but they got like two and a half billion dollars and they announced that they're using it for buybacks and they're going to retire the shares that they buy back. So and then they raise their guidance from it. It's it's honestly it was just good news all around. I even think like based on like the tradable float, if they buy two and a half billion, it's like three percent of their stock that's traded. And then they don't really do buybacks. Altria is a stock that pays a high dividend, they usually just return money back in terms of a dividend. That's how they return capital back. But they are, by having a buyback, it's kind of a, a pretty big deal. And then the big thing that they're doing, yeah, they're not going to get, they're retiring the shares. So they're buying two and a half billion dollars of the company stock, and then it's going into the treasury of the company. So they no longer have to pay dividends on it. So that's good news because think about it. That stock right now, like even when it was a little bit lower, it was yielding about 10%. So $2.5 billion, if you save 10% on that, they're saving $250 million a year that they don't have to pay back in dividends. So they monetize the stake in the company. They still own, again, they still own a couple, I want to say like another a couple hundred million dollars, maybe even a billion worth of AB InBev still. So they still own some of it, but... It's really good for their balance sheet. They raised their guidance. The stock went crazy, and everybody's feeling good, man. It's very, very good. It's very, very good, man. But that was it. And again, I mean, we've been hyped on it because we made option plays. Our option plays are up 500%, but 
like no joke we literally bought him to we bought at 39.53 i looked too that was our biggest purchase on mo ever believe it or not so you guys saying i loved mo well my biggest purchase was like nine days ago so i guess we've never bought more than 70 something shares there on any of the uh deposits so that was nice that was nice we'll take it but that's all I got for you, Chad. That's all the plays. That's everything. Tomorrow should be both simple and a doozy. And like I'm saying, the market maker is somewhat, for some reason, pricing in a fairly decent move. So let's see what it produces. But that is your watch list. And what do you got for me? Is there any questions? Any questions about anything? I can show you the world. Shining, shimmering, ray cut. Tell me, Powell, when did you last let the jobs decide a whole new world? Oh, bing! I don't do. I don't know if we could do bingo. I was looking into it. Bingo is kind of difficult, unless I like get like sheets out. There's like Zoom plugins, but like they all got like limits on all of the bingo. I'll try. I'll look in a little bit more. It may, it may, it may be a little difficult, though. Am I bullish on rebalancing? I'm kind of agnostic, more or less. I mean, I think the market is still riding the golden path. And even then, even if we sell off 100 points, you're still bullish. Even if you go up 100 points, I mean, you're still bullish. So it's all kind of a weird setup in the pile next week. I'm holding MO for minimum 10 years. MO's for the long term, those options. I'm going to hold them. Till next week. Maybe we'll get out tomorrow if they really go crazy. Long-term question. Do you buy LT in the options? No. We do not buy options in the long term. I'd separate those accounts if I were you. Probably one of the best advice I could ever give you is separate the long term from the options. Would XDV Day prevent drop? Nah, if anything, XDV might make it go down if we're past it. And then again, there's a lot of rollover activity that's going to be occurring tomorrow. Wish you luck taking the SIE this weekend. Good luck, my friend. Be wise out there. Study, rest. Don't stress yourself out. You'll be good. MO's management, they are de I think they're decent. I mean, they're quiet. They stay out of trouble. They've made some bad decisions. Uh, honestly, that's that deal. Bro, this AB InBev thing is crazy. So, like, do you know how much money? Like, are you ready for the most fucked up part about, about that? What do you think is the most, like, funniest part about MO? MO does not do that much in share buybacks. They do buybacks, but compared to how much they return back in capital, I think it's nothing. But there's an irony about it, about MO management and then even this AB InBev stuff today. It's like kind of like funny. It This is helping them out. This is helping. This today helps one of their past mistakes. I'm, I'm trying to lead you guys on. I want to play a little trivia. There's another factor we didn't talk about, about the AB InBev deal and MB selling or MO selling their uh, stake in AB InBev. And it relates to it. I'll give you a bit major clue. It relates to a huge loss that they've had. Well, there it is. You have it, Jewel. But what? It relates to that big Jewel loss. What could it be? Do 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 Like the video. What do you mean what bro? Like the video. Yeah, like the video. I don't care if it's after hours. So you guys remember they made a huge investment in Jewel and then they got clapped. Do you know how much money they lost on Jewel? They lost $13 billion on Jewel. MO. Altria had $13 billion. No, 13 They lost a ton on Jewel. They had to write down all of that. Holy smokes, literally. S but... He and you guys are like, oh my gosh, right? But here's the deal. So they just sold AB InBev, and that's a huge gain on their investment. So guess what? 
they're not paying taxes on any of the AB InBev profits. Why? Because they've wrote off the jewel losses. So they still have that piggy bank of jewel losses to write off for taxes on any gains like this. That's why some people want them to sell all of it because then they could get it and then and then they'll get I think if they sold all of AB InBev, they would get like eight or nine billion dollars. And then they'd have like a then they have thirteen billion in losses. So then they've already wrote and they already wrote off the losses. That's the thing. That's why the stock's already down. They've already wrote off the losses. So now they could just get an influx of nine billion dollars of cash with no tax implications on the back end. But for now, even what they already did, just very, very good, man. Very, very good. They came out with a lot. They came out with a lot. But yeah, any other questions? I'm sorry, another MO rant. I'm just, uh, dude, we went positive in the long term on it. I'm excited about that. I can't, I can't, I was, dude, a couple of days ago, I was negative on that. So I'm very, very happy. Yes, watch this. Live watch list, baby. We already finished it. So you will have to go back if you guys are just coming now. You'll be able to go through with the keys and the plays. I don't know. If the bonds weren't up, I would have made another bond play here on the live watch list. I don't know. Blink charging. I like charge point better, but even in general, I do think these uh, these chargers have very high valuations from when they came out. Uh, so it's they're you know I just I think it's kind of difficult for them to thrive according to their valuations at much lower valuations. I'd probably be a big fan. Mo play. I think we grabbed forty four fifties. We grabbed them on Tuesday or Monday. We grabbed forty four fifty calls for March twenty eighth on mo for five cents and now they're going for like 30 35 and then we bought uh what we put one deposit towards mo shares at 39.52 a black swan we talked about it today uh black swan i could think of would be if we didn't get a rate cut you know uh and we talked about that today that like everybody is you know i think right now the odds of their of there being a rate cut by this year are like 90%. So it's like the more the more time that goes on, if like the odds of a rate cut and everybody is like really expecting a rate cut and somehow, some way, we don't get a rate cut this year, I, I think that might be its own little baby black swan or major market repricing event in its own little way. Blink is only worth $200 million. Yeah, but for, like, how much do they have, like, a negative EPS? And, like, you know, for how much they, like, make, that, that's probably a lot of money. You grabbed MO at 17? <laughs> that's fire, bro. This is amazing. Just got the Lord's Chicken. Oh, man, I haven't ate yet. Wait a minute. Now that I think about it, I ate after the watch list or after the stream. Yeah, I haven't ate. I haven't ate in a couple hours. Next inflation. I don't think the inflation day. Realistically, I don't think like you guys. I hope you get it. You got to wake up. Powell next week is so big. It's insane. Powell is the only thing that could snap the market out of this golden path lull. All that matters is that dot plot. That's it. If that's if that dot plot ends up going higher, holy shit, the market's gonna change. Dot plot goes lower, we're gonna keep rallying and ripping at least for you know one month on, one month off until summer. So that's it, it's really big. M March and June, all all these SCP dates that that is where all of the magic is gonna happen. Colt meetup in Egypt. I want to go to Egypt still. My mom really want to go still. If they change, if that dot plot comes in, then everyone's going to have to start repricing. And then, like I'm saying, then we could start talking about, oh, shit, well, are we going to get a rate cut by the end of the year? You're going to Egypt in May? No way. That's hype. Well, that's the thing. I think... If anything, if I think worst case scenario next week, if that dot plot, let's say hypothetically goes higher 
and everybody gets shocked, the only way that the market doesn't absolutely die is if Powell brings in a lot of new information about quantitative tightening ending. And then he starts talking about the reverse repos and how they're going to start easing up again with the bond market. That would be the other factor that could help it out. So we'll see. How many Fed meetings? I think like eight. Maybe or no, little, no, no, less than that. I think maybe four or six. I have to double check. This is live, baby. Grade A music. We are wrapping it up here. We're getting towards the end. We've been here for 30 minutes. We already went over the keys. We went over the plays. We're doing a Q&A, baby. We've been doing these Thursday Night Lives. They've been great. We may keep talking about rate cuts he did last week. Rate, he, who, who, who? Power ain't cut real rates last week. What else we got? Any other questions? Las Vegas meetup. Chip event, NVIDIA. Uh, what is it called? It's called the GTC. So that's their event, the GTC event. That it stands for something. VIX after hours. I think VIX futures. So I think futures still trade on the assumption based on the assumption of the futures on the equities. Gold. I like gold. I'm still in my gold short. I've been saying, don't let that deceive you. I still think gold is in the prime setup. You know, gold is at that point right now where, again, if things, if a problem happens, gold can rock it off. If you do get a rate hike, gold can rock it off. Even if they don't cut rates, they're more like the next step is cut rates. So gold could still maintain. So I like it, but I do think that like last week, that's why I shorted it. I'm still down a little bit, but last week, I think I just thought that $200, $300 pop was a little out of hand, but I, I think gold is, is, it's looking phenomenal. I mean, if I may, all I can say to gold is this. That's what I can say to it. That's what I can say to it. Mm-hmm. The sound of sound money. 6J, no. I want it, man. I just, it's crazy because the yen, that's going to be huge next week. Oh, yeah, it is gapped up. But it still says, oh, I think that's the rollover. That's why. Because you got four days to roll. It's just, that's the front month contract rollover. That was Jingle Bells. Thank you for noticing. I feel like I'm a real artist. Oh, yeah, I have that random play on Nugget. We got to do some things. Tesla, I'd add it very low. We had that play. TLT, well, I'm in the bonds, like I'm saying. I think from now till next week, I think there'll be a little bit of relief on bonds. Bonds can get outsized benefit by Powell talking, quantitative tightening, ending. And other than that, though, I think you could start getting ready for the TLT, but the timing and when they cut, how much they cut, and the path forward. There's a lot of uh, variables to it. We talked, we talked, we had this whole talk today on stream. It's not going to be as uh, easy or clear cut because, again, if TLT, how it moves will be dependent on how many times they cut or how much. So, like, if they cut one time and then say they're pausing and they make it very clear that they will and they actually do for another two years, they pause, TLT doesn't have to go up. TLT might go up a little bit, but it, why, why would it go up? Because then that means rates are still at 5%. So even with one rate cut, rates would still be at 5 That's where things start to get a little bit more interesting on that front. LT is doing covered calls, the same thing as doing options. Nah, yes and no. I mean, Benjamin Graham and the intelligent investor, not a big fan of covered calls. They say it's a waste of opportunity, but, you know, I've really, I've noticed you can miss out on it, but it's always a good time. There's always a good opportunity to roll over. And then I figured as long as you're doing it for higher gains, I think it makes sense. Or like, again, guaranteeing a win-win scenario can't go wrong, but it's different than like speculating. 
you know, option. You could trade an option in your long term. Options, you know, they're designed to go to zero. They expire. But if you sell a covered call that guarantees a win and getting paid, I think it's less of a of a speculative event, more so. But it definitely is frowned upon. Again, intelligent investor Benjamin Graham, he's not a fan of it, and it's it is a it's a risk of opportunity cost. ZB is uh, pretty much the same trade trade as TLT. Yes, just on futures. You just got out the strip club? Nice, man. Did you show any strippers your Bitcoin portfolio? I feel like that's what you do when crypto's at highs. You go to you go to strip clubs and you're like, hey. You see how it's called? It's called cryptocurrency. Mm-hmm. It's real. That, that's real money. I just I can't touch it, but it's real. Like, but it's mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. Crypto, cryptocurrency. Yeah, like like the Egyptians. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Options on the best home builder. He's saying up or down. That's up to you. But I don't know. I mean, home builders are peaking. Peaking and geeking. I tip you in Ethereum. I think weren't strippers taking Bitcoin and Ethereum tips at one point. I'm saying I don't know. I, that, I feel like that was that, that was a headline in 2021. That was during all of the hype, the ghetto spread, or watch the vid. Well, you should watch the video. But ghetto spread, you just buy an option, and then it goes up in value, and then you short an option that is further out the money than the one you bought for more money than what you paid for. That's it. I'm long ZB for a flip. I just wanted to flip it yesterday. I'm just trying to play one of the relief rallies, and I just made an average on it today. So I'm not married to it. And it gets really volatile at this level because it's either the 10 years going to bounce between 4.25 to 4.5 or stay 4.0 to 4.25. <coughs> mm -mm. Yeah, Futo, that was great today. Fufo, short option, you sell to open instead of buy to open. That I would paper trade and, and get familiar with it before you do it because it could be a little bit nerve-wracking. Mm -mm. right, I need water. I don't want to leave you guys here on a water break, so it's already been 40 minutes. All right, man. Any any final questions? I think I might have to wrap it up here. We got tomorrow morning. We're not going to be there early, but we should have a good time on Friday. I think the Biden housing credit could be good. I'm excited to see it, but, you know, more housing stuff kind of going to solidify higher prices. P.E. ratio. Well, people look at it as a gauge to see how much premium you're paying on a stock relative to the industry. And it just lets you know how much a company is making in earnings per share. So every share brings in X amount of earnings power. So if your stock makes a dollar, they make a million dollars in profit and they have a million shares. Every share makes one dollar per share. If you're paying ten dollars per share for it, you're paying a ten times price to earnings. The yen, yeah, I'm about to make another move on it and really... This week, I mean, if it is going to go crazy, if they do exit the rate policy, uh, right now people are saying it's an 80% chance they will. But I don't know. I feel like they kind of might hesitate a little. But otherwise, it's it could upend a lot of things. I mean, the question is, just like ours, it might kind of be like when we get our rate cuts, we'll see how they react with rate hikes because their first steps, it just depends how much they cut, how aggressive but the yen should shoot up on it, and then Japan equities, we might see a little bit of a of a of a back and forth between Japan and U.S. equities. EBITDA is earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. So it's seeing how much you earned before taxes and interest and other outside factors, so you can measure and see how your core business is doing. 
so that the other factors, because sometimes your taxes and interest, if those fluctuate, that could mean higher or less earnings. Doesn't necessarily mean your business did bad. You just had higher taxes. Your products may be doing good. They will start moving their money back, but it all depends at the rate. So like if the Japan, if they raise rates and it's all small and they're still supportive, it could be small. But I do think once you hit the domino, it's going to cause a, a, you know, a tidal wave. But we'll see. But that's next week, March 18th. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, on that note, Chattadonia, I love all of you. Have a wonderful evening. Get ready for tomorrow morning. And Chad, be blessed, baby. I have the opportunity to tell you to get a good night's sleep, baby. Sleep peaceful. Just know that you blessed, baby. Like I said, I'm going to give you a hug tonight. Feel like you hug, baby. Tell yourself some good things. Just be at peace, man. Tell yourself it's going to be a good dream. Wake up in the morning. Say it's going to be a good day. Wake up and drive. It's Friday, baby. No, you got a long term. If you don't got a long term, we could start a long term. <laughs> so, Chad, I love you. God bless every single one of you. Thank you guys again. Finger to the sky for real. Have a great evening. And horn Let's go. Give me a real horn. Oh, I know, dude. I can't believe it was 41 minutes. I feel like we just got here, baby. Wake up and drive, baby. Let's get it, man. So it's good. We got Friday, man. It's going to be a good one, man. Thank you to all of you for real for all the time in the mornings and the evenings, baby. I hope the long terms have been working. Let's make some good work here. Let's have a good close to the end of the week. But I love you all. Have a wonderful evening. And peace. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> yeah.